I need to oil these bearings about every month or so. These have old style plane bearings, so it's just a, a post that, uh, that holds the bell in place and rotates. Uh, modern bells would have uh, ball bearings and they go a lot smoother and don't require the maintenance. Uh, they make the bells a lot easier to ring. Uh, but that should do it for a while. Change ringing started in England in about the 17th century. They discovered a way to have the bells move in a full circle. That full circle ringing is what leads to change ringing. It's a combination of slightly physical activity, a lot of mental activity, and a lot of uh, working together. Each step isn't really a difficult one to figure out, but you cannot let your mind wander, and you have to stick with it. Uh, but I, I enjoy that part of it very much. I was drawn to change ringing because of my interest in, in music. I'm studying music and computer science. The bells provide an interesting combination of music and math that I found appealing. I really like the patterns that go into it and how the, the patterns can manifest themselves musically. It takes a couple seconds for the bell to swing all the way around. So you can't ring normal music. What you can do though is you have a set of bells and they ring one after the other. So you can kind of have a continuous ribbon of sound. And that gets kind of boring if you just have the same order. So the English said, well, let's spice things up. What if we have a pair of bells switch places? And every single time the bells ring, every two seconds they're gonna ring in a different order. Change ringing involves ringing a set of tuned bells in a series of permutations called changes. And the way it would go is all the bells would ring, and then the order would change, and that would be a new permutation. Every uh, row is every uh, second and a half or so. So there's a small, concise set of rules that somebody would remember, and that will generate up to hours of unique permutations. When somebody's ringing, they're focusing on the path of their bell and making it fit in with everybody else. The people here are learning to control the bell, and, and starting to dabble in change ringing just a little bit. So they don't know how glorious it is. Uh, and I do, and I'm trying to lead them to that glory. <laughs> I was interested in how they did it. It, it intrigued the heck out of me, and, but I, I couldn't figure it out. Ultimately, I decided the only way I was going to figure it out was to learn it. Um, and Chicago was the closest bell tower. I can't say I was real excited about driving, you know, basically seven hours every Saturday, but I've been doing it every week uh, since the beginning of the year. There's only about, I think, 50 or so change ringing bell towers in the U.S. There's several on the East Coast, uh, and there are three in the Midwest. Mitchell Tower is a replica of Maudlin Tower in Oxford, England, so the, the bell tower here is strong enough to, to house the bells, which isn't a given for most towers. The bells were dedicated in 1908. The bells are a memorial to Alice Freeman Palmer, who is the first dean of women here at the university. I've been ringing here since about 1985, and my kids ring, and my wife, I met my wife through ringing. Somehow, change ringing really leads to deep friendships. It's that, uh, that you're depending on each other and trusting each other. It has something that extends beyond change ringing that I think is very meaningful. It's a very close-knit community, a very good change from my uh, study at Chicago.
is it an art form? People ask me if it's music, and I don't know how to answer that. I mean, it's just a beautiful sound. Some people have said it isn't music, um, but, but it, it, it is. It's an unusual kind of music, and it's kind of mathematical. It's open for debate whether it's music, whether it's art.